Hi, welcome to 7 Facts. This is the channel that holds the largest collection of facts about every country, state or territory in the world. Before we begin, I ask you to click the subscribe button. I upload 3 times a week, every week, so there's plenty of content. Martinique is an insular region of France, located in the Lesser Antilles of the West Indies. That's in the Caribbean Sea, if you were wondering. Unlike many other islands in the region, Martinique has quite the population, 385,000 people. All of them are French citizens with full political and legal rights. Of course, this automatically makes them EU citizens too, and their currency is the Euro. On September 15, 1635, Pierre Belin Nambou, French governor of the island of St. Kitts, landed in the harbor of Saint-Pierre with 150 French settlers after being driven off St. Kitts by the English. They established the first European settlement on the island, at Fort Saint-Pierre. From here, the story gets a bit harsh, at least by modern standards. Pierre Belin died in 1636, and his nephew, Jacques Diel, took over as governor. In this same year, the indigenous Caribs rose against the settlers to drive them off the island. This was just the first of many skirmishes. The French successfully repelled the natives and forced them to retreat to the eastern part of the island. The tense situation remained for over 20 years. Then, in 1655, the Caribs once again revolted against French rule. The response this time was nothing short of a war. Many were killed, and those who survived were taken captive and expelled from the island. Some Carib had fled to Dominica or St. Vincent, where the French agreed to leave them in peace, thus leaving Martinique almost completely in the hands of Europeans. The island of Martinique is home to Mont Pelé, an active volcano. Right now, it's quiet, and it's been that way for quite some time. But in 1902, Mont Pelé was anything but quiet. The eruption from that year was dubbed the worst volcanic disaster of the early 20th century. The devastation was incredible. Within minutes of the eruption, the city of Saint-Pierre was destroyed and 30,000 people lost their lives. The eruption left only two survivors in the direct path of the blast flow. One was Louis-Auguste Sipari. He was thrown in prison the night before the eruption because of a bar fight. He was put in solitary confinement and locked in a single cell that was partially underground with stone walls and one narrow hole for ventilation that was facing away from the volcano. This was the most sheltered building in the city and it's what saved the man's life. The other survivor was Léon Compère Leandre. He barely escaped and was badly burned, but in the end managed to run far enough. Two weeks later, he headed to the city of Fort de France, when he barely escaped a second death cloud. Eventually, he settled in the village of Mont Rouge, only to have another cloud pour through on August 30th. He was once again one of only a few that survived. Fort de France is the capital of Martinique and one of the major cities of the Caribbean. This city too had its share of disasters, being captured by a British expedition in 1762, partially destroyed by an earthquake in 1839 and devastated by fire in 1890. At the turn of the 20th century, however, after the complete destruction of Saint-Pierre due to the eruption, Fort de France became increasingly important and took over as the main city of the island. Before this, the water supply was inadequate at best, it was surrounded by swamps and was notorious for yellow fever. Today though, Fort de France is best known as the Paris of the Caribbean and for good reason. Aside from being a tourist hotspot, it's also one of the most important economic centers of the entire Caribbean region. 
During World War II, the Vichy government was in control of Martinique. The Vichy government is the name given to the French authorities that were under the direct influence of Nazi Germany after their defeat early in the war. This meant that Martinique was used as a resupply base for the German U-boats during the Battle of the Caribbean. In 1942 alone, these U-boats managed to sink 182 Allied ships in an attempt to disrupt the Allied supply line to Europe. But by 1943, on Bastille Day, free French forces took over the island and from then on Martinique was no longer under the influence of the Vichy government. If you visit Martinique, you will be amazed with the condition of the country. It looks like the France of the Caribbean. The place is a great getaway for honeymooners or just people looking to relax. Black sand beaches and rainforests are found in the north, with yet more beautiful sands, coconut palms and warm waters to the south. Hundreds of thousands of people visit this island every year, so be sure to reserve your tickets in time. The official language is French, which is spoken by virtually the entire population. But, in addition, most residents can also speak Martinican Creole, a form of Antillean Creole based on French, Carib and African languages, with elements of English, Spanish and Portuguese. It may sound strange today, but there was a time when the use of Creole was forbidden in schools and even within families. French was the only language accepted, and Creole was considered to be a sign of a lack of education and was even considered insulting, so many Martinicans grew up not speaking Creole at all. Nowadays, use of Creole is predominant among friends and close family, and increasingly more in the local media. And that's good, because Martinican Creole is quite unique. Unlike other varieties of French Creole, Martinican Creole is not readily understood by speakers of standard French due to significant differences in grammar, syntax, vocabulary and even pronunciation. These were 7 facts about Martinique. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts downstairs in the comment section and afterwards check me out on Facebook or Twitter. A good way to offer more support to this channel is through Patreon, link in the description. I hope to see you next time, bye.